Let's draw the brachial plexus using a blank sheet of paper. And the left side of the page will be proximal and the right side of the page will be distal. The first thing that we'll do is we'll draw four lines to divide the page into five different sections. We'll label the top of each section using the terminology for the brachial plexus, roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. We can remember that sequence using the mnemonic, reach to drink cold beer. The next thing that we'll want to know is the number of segments in each of these sections. So for the roots, there's five. For the trunks, there's three. For the divisions, there's six. For the cords, there's three. And for the branches, there's five. So usually what I'll say to myself is five, three, six, three, five. So I can remember that sequence. As far as the five roots go, they stem from the ventral primary rami of spinal nerves C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. The C5 and C6 roots will combine to form what's called the superior trunk. The C7 root will pass on as the middle trunk, and the C8 and T1 roots will combine to form the inferior trunk. In order to go from three trunks to six divisions, there has to be a multiplication factor of two. If you'll draw the posterior divisions first, you'll notice that they form an arrow. You can complete each of the anterior divisions by drawing two lines on the tops and the bottom of this sequence, and then note that the middle trunk has an anterior division that combines with the anterior division from the superior trunk. You've already got three chords by just continuing these lines. The posterior divisions form what is called the posterior chord. The anterior divisions from the superior and middle trunk form the lateral chord, and the anterior division from the inferior trunk forms the medial chord. If you will connect the lateral and medial chords using a sigma formation, you can get three of the five terminal branches. This includes the musculocutaneous nerve, the median nerve, and the ulnar nerve. And then note that the posterior chord contributes to the remainder of the two branches, the axillary and radial nerves. In order to complete the collateral branches of the brachial plexus, you need to note that there's two additional branches from the roots, two from the trunks, and seven from the cords. So I remember this as sort of an extension for the first number. So remember the first number was five, three, six, three, five. Our second number is two, two, seven. Note that these come from the roots, trunks, and the cords. For the two collateral branches from the roots, these will include from the C5 root, the dorsal scapular nerve, and from the C5, 6, and 7 roots, the long thoracic nerve. From the trunks, there's going to be two collateral branches from the superior trunk. This is the suprascapular nerve and the nerve to the subclavius. And from the cords, there's going to be one collateral branch from the lateral cord, that's the lateral pectoral nerve, and then three from the posterior and medial cords, respectively. So from the posterior cord, these include the upper, middle, and lower subscapular nerves, and from the medial cord, this includes the medial pectoral nerve, and then two cutaneous nerves, the medial brachial cutaneous nerve and the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. You can study segmentation by following the spinal nerve roots through the brachial plexus from proximal to distal. So if you think about the dorsal scapular nerve on the root, you can draw that C5 as you follow it through and note that the dorsal scapular nerve is going to contain C5 fibers. If you look at the long thoracic nerve, likewise, you'll note that spinal nerve roots C5, C6, and C7 all contribute to the formation of the long thoracic nerve. Now you can continue this sequence for the remainder of trunks, divisions, cords, branches, and collateral branches throughout the brachial plexus. However, what you need to note is that the posterior cord and all of the subsequent branches that emerge from it do not fit this pattern. That's to say that the upper subscapular nerve, the lower subscapular nerve, and the axillary nerve all have C5 and C6 spinal nerve distribution. The middle subscapular nerve, which is also called the thoracodorsal nerve, has C6, C7, and C8 spinal nerve contributions, and the radial nerve has contributions from spinal nerves C5 to T1.